bungee. Yeah, let's see it, bro. Oh, styling. <laughs> and, and what's happening, man? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me again, bro. Oh, it's only a pleasure, man. I believe you've been up to some training, ice baths, and all, all things wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I just finished my last session of the day. Um, got into the ice bath, had a hot shower after, and yeah, getting some more business with you. Fantastic. Finish up dinner later, get into bed early. And do it all again. Mm, sounds great. The life of a fighter, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we love it. We love it. Absolutely, man. And uh, how's how's life at middleweight, Jero? What's how's that all going? Um, yeah, I'm loving middleweight. I don't think I actually chatted to someone about it the other day. And I, I, if you look generally in the world at light heavyweight divisions, it's a, it's a pretty dead division throughout the world currently like there's nothing too much exciting happening i mean even within the ufc if you look they've got uh daniel cormier now fighting for his second title at heavyweight in a super fight against stipe so it's i don't think i would have had the opportunities fighting at light heavyweight that i've now had at middleweight um i don't think i would have been able to take this internationally and set myself and establish myself into the international fight scene like I have. Yeah, 100%, man. It's It's been like that for quite some time as well. It, it, it's quite a recurring theme. Like light heavyweight seems to be like a like a phenomenon at the moment. And obviously, I, I would suspect Daniel Cormier basically just ran out of opponents and was like, well, the, the next best shot you guys gave me got trampled. So <laughs> what's next for me? Exactly. And I think, yeah, yeah. And I th think even back home here in the EFC, it would have been something similar for yourself. Um, there was obviously the talk of champion Dolce and there was there's really not much beyond that at the moment. And it's... It's quite sad, unfortunately, but it's, you know, you've obviously, is it a, is it a vindicated uh, decision to, to move overseas and, and then focus more on international fights? Yeah, sure, yeah. If, if you look at, um, that was a big part of my decision initially as well because I looked at the division within the EFC and it wasn't a super active division. I mean, Chef kind of obliterated everything that was in his path and even that, like, they weren't, that many opponents for him to fight and even if you look at Dolce now I mean he's got the super fight with Andy Fenzel so even for him he's struggling to find opponents I mean Stuart Austin was a good opponent and I think um, that's definitely a fight that they could run back because I believe Dolce was in quite a bit of trouble in that fight and sure. he did really well to come back and do that um, and overturn and win that fight so kudos to him for doing that but like we say the, the division throughout the world it's it's not great at the moment sure um what's your diet like at middleweight uh you obviously work quite closely with the nutritionist and, and has it been quite a big life change to to make sure you stay at a, at a lighter weight it has it really has yeah um it, it's it's tight most of the time I'm pretty strict. It's just really like portion control and the initial cut that we did about a year ago, that was really difficult in terms of having to change a lifestyle completely from what I was doing because, I mean, making light heavyweight was pretty easy for me. Going from about between 98 and 100 to 93 was pretty easy. Sure. Could do it in a couple of weeks, but now... It's a complete lifestyle change that we've undertaken over the last year. But if I look back, it's about a year that I've been at middleweight now. And like my girlfriend said the other night, it's just, it's like we can do it with our eyes closed now. You know, it's, it's just part of who I am and what I do. And I like to believe I'm a consummate professional. So I really do whatever I have to do to facilitate my performance and facilitate um, my ambitions and what I'm driven to do, you know. Sure, sure. So, so you've had to make a couple of drastic changes. Did you use any, uh, like, any sort of nutrition in specific, or diet type, or kind of just more portion control? Um, I do. I'd say throughout the camp, mostly I'm looking at a high protein, medium fat 
medium to low carb for most of my camp. And then as it gets closer to the fight, we start cutting certain things out, um, certain natural sugars that I take in, and the, the carb portions get lower. The fats change up a bit from certain fats that I would be eating, and they change to different fats. And I think, yeah, like then the portions just become a lot stricter in terms of weighing your food. I'm always having to weigh my food and... <laughs> making sure that it's scale. Like precise like literally right now i was packing my lunch for tomorrow and it was literally like breaking tiny things in half <laughs> instead of it being like 80 grams to 78 grams and stuff so <laughs> that's the discipline it takes but if that's what it takes to make me a world champion then I'll do what I have to, you know. Hundred percent, man. Um, obviously, you, you you're now getting ready for your second crack at, at Brave. Um, just tell us what what's that experience been like at Brave uh, on a whole. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So the first experience was amazing. I really enjoyed the the experience as a whole. Uh, getting to Jordan um, in Amman and actually meeting the people and the family of brave and everyone who works for brave lucas and yusuf and the crew meeting the sheikh and all the media crew behind the scenes they really welcomed me and um, took me through my paces from the moment we got there um, handling the media business was great and it was just on a whole it was a thoroughly enjoyable experience in the lead up to the fight um, the fight itself, fight day, it was, I think myself and Rich will agree that it was, it was mo one of the most insane environments that we've ever had to undertake and embrace. I mean, it was absolutely crazy. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan was nuts. It was, it was absolutely nuts. The crowd, but it was beautiful. Like, uh, I didn't actually realize how hostile the environment was until I actually sat in the stands afterwards watching the other guys fight. I was like, this is this is something else. It was crazy. Yeah. But I loved it. Like I really, really loved it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Hundred percent, man. And um, Brave, obviously, like uh, you mentioned, their media, which which I, I watch quite closely, and, and they, they do things really, really well, and they <laughs> they, they don't uh, spare any expense, and they really go for it. And it's it's obviously an organisation that's very young, but it's growing. It seems at, at at like a massive rate. You know, they're expanding to all over the world. They've got fighters from all over the world, um, and they're really putting on great shows. Was there anything in particular that you picked up that they do different to to other shows that, that that's maybe like helping them accelerate their growth? I think the thing about them is that their main focus is they concentrate on their fighters. Sure. They know that if their fighters are happy and if their fighters are taken care of, then they know that they're going to get the best out of them. So they really put us up in good hotels and they're really at our beck and call. Like if we in need of absolutely anything, they're there to help us and they're there to accommodate us and facilitate us in any way that they can. Um, like you said, in terms of media, they really go out of their way to boost the fighters' profiles. And like you say, they've accelerated to all over the world now. So, But the thing that really stood out for me was from the time that I got there, just the communication and how they ran through everything with me and they told me they, they scheduled literally the whole week within 15 minutes and gave me a program. My itinerary was down and they said, okay, and the next day we'll be doing this at this place. And the cool thing is that I really loved about it was that almost everything that we did was within the hotel. So they put us up in like a five-star hotel. So their saunas are there, we eat there, our early morning weigh-ins are there, our media face-offs were there, so it's so easy for the fighter, like we literally, if you say you, you're staying on the 15th floor, they'll say, okay, on Monday at 3.15pm, you've got your media shooting on the 9th floor, and you go down, you do your media shooting, you can go back up, like, there's never really an inconvenience for any of the fighters, and sure. I think that's really what makes the difference. Sure, sure, man. And it, it just seems like a, a very exciting young promotion. I think people 
Um, I've heard a bit of criticism about them lately, but you have to remind people that they, I don't even think they've been going for two years yet, you know, and they, they're really putting a, a lot behind it in, into the growth of the sport, um, obviously in, in their hometown, Bahrain, where they originate from, but they massive man the, the shows look really really good and, and it's exciting to to see their interest in south africa and south african fighters which is which is awesome for us you know uh, it invests yeah. us into to seeing guys like yourself compete there which is pretty cool um in in your first fight obviously you fought uh, ikram aliskarov um was a was a hard fought decision was um, it was an interesting fight for me from a fan side. Um, I just want to get your, your your thoughts on what what did you make of the fight at the end? I'm, I'm guessing I don't know if you've watched it back again or you re- remember it quite uh, well from your fight. How, what what were your thoughts on on how the fight went? So yeah, it it was a really interesting fight. Like you say, from a spectator's point of view, I always knew it was going to be a very tough fight. I mean, it's a guy that had. 105 amateur fights and he's unbeaten as a pro and he's a multi-time sambo european and world champion so it was always going to be a great fight for me and that's what really excited me is that they basically put me in the promotion and they gave me their top guy so that was really cool just to start off with and then the actual fight um in the fight i believe that in after the first round, I sat down and I knew I had the first round because I, I got the takedown and I dropped him with the leg kick. I believe the second round was really close. Um, it could have gone either way. And I think the third, initially initially after the third, because I, I landed on my back right at the end, he didn't really... He didn't really do much with his position. He kind of stalemated his position quite a bit. And just just for the first time in my career, having ended a fight on my back, my initial thoughts were like, okay, this is not good. And it left, it left a bit of doubt in my mind. And I thought I'd done enough to at least draw the fight. Um, that was my initial thoughts. And when I heard the first judge's decision... Um, go in my favor uh, points wise and then the two other judges obviously swung his way and that was yeah that that was the decision on the night that the judges had made and I respect the decision and I didn't watch the fights I just let I let the dust settle and I got back home and I watched the fight for the first time a week later as soon as they put it back up they played a Brave do a really cool thing where they do a re-live event or relive where yeah. they, a week later, play the event live in Bahrain and then you can watch it throughout the world almost like a live replay. And I tuned into that and I watched the fight and straight afterwards I called Rich and I was like, Rich, I won that fight. Because I actually saw I was pressing the pace in the fight and... I was going forward and I was looking to make the action of the fight. And if you look at the new rules within MMA, um, it's not so much about the guy that's controlling the hexagon so much and those things count for less. Like even if you're getting the takedowns, if you're not really doing anything with the takedowns, it doesn't count for much, you know. So he got the takedown, but I was more active off my back. I was hitting him, um, but I also got a takedown, and I dropped him as well with the leg kicks. And I think I landed more significant strikes if you watch the fight on a whole. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like, the decision didn't go my way, and I'm not a fighter that usually leaves it up to the judges. And it was a hard lesson learned, but I, I wasn't hard on myself about that because I went out there and I performed and I actually I ticked the boxes that I spoke with my coach about before the fight and I left it all out there and I believe if the way I look at it is that I didn't actually lose the fight I just ran out of time to win because (laughs) after three rounds he was completely blown and I still had more gas in the tank and yeah but the decision didn't go my way and it's a it was a great lesson for me. It's made me a better man. It's made me a better fighter, having to have crossed that path 
early on in my career and just the mentality of a fight like that it's it's can only hold me in good stead if you know what i mean yeah sure um j- just from my side like obviously when watching you in the efc early on it, it it seemed like you were a guy who came out quite fast and, and were, 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 you were quite aggressive um this approach seemed a little bit more uh more let's say like a little bit more tainted like you're a little bit more composed like trying to be pace yourself a little bit more um you know it wasn't the usual like straight out the gate aggressive chat honeycomb that we're used to is, is that an accurate assumption to make is it is it like a game plan that you had in your mind obviously we we know the traveling is, is always going to play a part and then having to wait cut on the road and things like that um was it just one of those things that just really just the decision didn't go your way um i think you're, you you very accurate in what you say that i usually am a guy who starts quite fast and i really do come in guns blazing and it's actually something that a lot of people did ask me about after the fight and it was just when you're fighting a guy as experienced as him and if you come in guns blazing and you make an early mistake that early mistake as he's shown against previous opponents he's put them away with that so mm-hmm. i know i have the technical ability and the gas tank to go the distance and i just believe that that was a fight that i i said to rich before the fight i said i want to be in there for as long as i can and i want to do experience it as a whole but i could have been aggressive at more t- uh, more aggressive at times i really could have but looking back in hindsight like you you can't sometimes pick that up i mean sure. i don't i don't regret anything that i did really in the fight like a, a lot of people like as soon as you got the takedown once you jump on him and like i say it's 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 all about the momentum in the fight i, I felt i had the ascendancy on the feet and i was doing a lot of damage on the feet and i was i was picking him off from the outside and i, I really did damage to his leg like a lot of people don't know I actually fractured his leg in the fight from those kicks that I dropped him with and the thing is like he was just a tough dude man <laughs> he, he was a tough dude and he he paced himself well and he did what he had to do to win on the night um like he fought a negative fight but I mean sometimes a negative fight against an explosive fighter like myself is what you have to do so I don't have any excuses with this fight, you know, like the weight cut went really well, the travel went really well. I settled in to my environment well and it's it's something that I have looked into now this camp in terms of the way I pace myself throughout the fight and where I can push, but I I do feel I was still pushing the action and pressing like if you watch the fight, I came out in the third and I was still going forward and I was still looking for the finish. It's just certain opponents you have to take different approaches for i mean like i said it was a highly skilled opponent and not many people know that this guy's had over like 100 amateur fights so sure. it is what it is you know yeah 100 percent, man and the the beauty about, about fighting is that you get to do it again soon um you're headed with brave to belfast it's uh what are they calling it, like the European invasion kind of thing, and it's the first yeah. of its kind, and it's it's really, really, it's panning out to be a massive card. You've got also uh, our South African long lost son, France and Lambos, fighting for the title. Um, you, you've got a fight there. Uh, sorry if I mash this dude's name up, but uh, Tarek Suleiman. Um, yeah. How's that all going? Uh, how much do you know about your opponent? Are you doing anything different for this one? And just give us an update on what's happening there. So yeah, Tariq is my opponent. Um, I know quite a bit about him. I've had mates who've trained against him and with him at Tiger Muay Thai the past four years, which has actually worked out quite nicely in my favor. We've had guys grappling in his gym with him and against him and seen him train for the last four years. So that's actually worked out quite nicely. Obviously, he's got a lot of footage online, which I've also studied and seen. Um, Rich Rich was in Will Fleury's corner against him and cornered against him in Jordan 2, which okay. was great. Um, 
So I've had a lot to work from. In terms of camp, it's been a really good camp again for me. I've been blessed um, with everything in this camp. So it's been really good in terms of application and fighter focus. And I think I haven't changed anything, but I've changed a lot at the same time. <laughs> sure. So it's difficult to speak of now, but I think on the night you'll see you'll see I'll galvanize into a different beast. I really think that after that last fight and now going through this camp, I really think I've leveled up in a lot of ways, both mentally, physically, and just in terms of my maturity, I think I've gone up another notch and preparation has been great. So it's, yeah, it's, it's 12 days out now, 13 days out. So almost time to put everything on the line again. Sure, man. Awesome. Uh, really looking forward to this one, man. It's a really, really exciting card. Um, if you've just like briefly followed Brave, you can see they're really putting on quite a show. There's a, uh, you mentioned Will Fleury. There's a guy who was out here, Tommy Gunn, who was with Will Fleury. He's fighting. I think it's his yeah. first pro fight. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of interest for South Africans to, to pay close attention there. Um, what I wanted to ask you, Chatty, is, um, what's it like the traveling obviously not the negative side the you know being away from home and that sort of stuff but how, how important was it to you as a fighter to to compete in a promotion that that gets you around i mean you you're going to be uh, going to belfast you were you were in jordan before now, how cool is that as a pro to get to see some of the world while you fight as well oh man it's it's one of my favorite things like in general, I, I love to travel and sure. I like to think of myself as a good traveler. Um, everything surrounding travel, I plan accordingly and I plan well enough, which I do, then everything runs as smoothly as I can. You know, like I control everything that's within my control, but everything that's not in my control, I just, I just let it be and adapt, you know. But like you say, I'm getting to see so many cool places like I'd never book a ticket for myself to go to Belfast and here I am two weeks out and I'm going to be in Belfast in Northern Ireland, which sure. is, it's a beautiful place. And even like I'm on in Jordan was, I'd never go on holiday to Jordan. Sure. Like I'd never pay for myself to go there, but it's actually such a great place. It was an awesome country. I met some awesome people and I had such an appreciation for the fans there. Like I'd walk and literally the day I was leaving the country and I was at the airport like battered and bruised and blue eyes. And <laughs> and I had like people who actually work at the airport come up to me and they're like, oh, Superman, great fight. And it just shows like things like that, the little things that make such a difference to fighters. And uh, the, yeah, the, the experiences are so crazy. Like, I can't even actually put it in words. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, uh, what can the uh, Brave fans expect from you come fight night this time around? Well, I think they can expect the same. I mean, I'm always a fighter who's prepared and well-trained. I'm always in good shape and in good nick. I always come with the mentality and physicality to fight. Um, I always put on a show and I'm... I always fight quite freely and whatever is presented in front of me, I'm going to take. I'm obviously going to fight hard and fight explosively as I always do. And it's, it's nothing different from any of my other fights. I mean, I'm a crowd friendly fighter and I'm someone that people like to watch because I'm not that boring, that boring kind of guy. So it's going to be another exciting fight, an explosive fight, but I definitely will finish this guy. I, I've, I've played it over a hundred times in my head and I've won the fight in so many different ways already. So whatever's pre presented to me on the night, I'll take. I'm obviously not taking for granted what he'll bring to the cage and my awareness will be up and I'll, I won't be complacent with anything, but I'm really looking forward to this one. Like I say, I really feel I've, I've leveled up in this camp and just after the last fight and the last experience so we've, we've just got to control the controllables over the next 13 days and get to ball fast and cut weight and make weight and rehydrate and get in the cage and smash a fool and then smash a beer and go home man. Eh? <laughs>
Exactly. Yeah, a couple of Guinnesses, right? Oh, got to do it. You got to do it, man. <laughs> That's awesome, Chatty man. Yeah. Just, just the last thing there. Um, just for if there's by chance any brave fans that are listening to this, where can they pick you up on social media and stuff like that? So on social media, I'm probably most active on my Instagram handle and my Twitter. On Instagram, it's Chad underscore Superman. On Twitter, it's the same handle. If not, you can look at just look up Chad Hanukom. Um Yeah, those those are the handles, and yeah, please keep following my progress. To all the brave fans, thank you guys for being so great, and I really appreciate the support. And I promise to put on a great fight again for you guys. Hundred percent, brother. Thank you so much for your time, man. We know it's it's precious at this stage, and there's a lot of hard work that's going on. And really appreciate it. And massive, massive. We wish you luck, but and all the best. It's it's uh, going to be a great fight on a great card in a great place. And I think it's really, really exciting. So people must tune in. Um, we'll obviously keep everyone updated about what's happening with your fights. And um, I know last time the stream didn't work too well, but we'll 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 get yeah. that going. If not, when it comes out, we'll post a YouTube video and just make sure everyone gets to see that fight as as much as possible man thank you man and i just like to say from my side just thank you to you for all the great work you have been doing and are currently doing in south african mma as a whole and you really are taking things to the next level and i wish a lot more people could follow the lead and all follow your lead and follow the example that you're setting and just spreading the positivity of mma and what's happening around the world in MMA and in the country itself. Like you really, you really are doing great things for us fighters and just for South African MMA as a whole. So thank you, man. Oh, but appreciate that, man. I got goosebumps yesterday. <laughs> I really, really appreciate the kind words, my brother. And we, we wish you all the best. Let's just uh, get a look at that onesie one last time, bro. <laughs> Let's get a good look at the onesie. <laughs> and oh, the, Superman from toe to head, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Gita, Gita from the feet up. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. Have a good evening, man, and thanks very much for your time, brother. Appreciate it. Ciao, brother. Thank Ch you so much, man. Keep Ch well. You too, man. Ciao. Belfast, are you ready for Brave? We are featuring tonight some of the most dangerous and skilled fighters from all over the world. Brave 13 takes Brave Combat Federation for the first time ever to Europe, to the city of Belfast. Macrodina stomps. These warriors looking over blood. Tickets on sale now.